What's up, YouTube? This is your girl, Jazzy J, with another video. Um, today, I wanted to talk about something that is very, very dear to my heart. Something that is very alive and present in my family. And as you can see by the name of this video, it is about hard of hearing diagnosis on your child and what to do now. Um, I wanted to share this because, as you all know, I have two children. My daughter, Lidani, is five and my son is three, Clifton. We call him C3 for short because he's the third. Um, when our son was born, he did not pass the newborn hearing screening. And they do this on every child now. Um, I think, I want to say maybe 10 years back they didn't use, used to do this when children were born. But now they do. They put little um, headphones on the baby and they do sounds and then they test your brain, their brain waves to make sure that they can hear when they leave the hospital. So our son did not pass that test. Now there are a lot of children who don't pass it initially because they might still have some amniotic fluid in their ears and so they tell you just come back in a couple in a couple weeks, um, we'll retest the baby again. So we did that. Came back, still didn't pass the test. So at that point, they said, well, okay, well we're gonna schedule an appointment with an audiologist. And at that point we were like, well, what the hell is an audiologist, right? So I said, we're going to schedule with an audiologist, which is the doctor who performs a more extensive test to make sure that your son can or cannot hear. So we're like, okay. So at this point, we start to get a little worried. I'm the word ward in the family. So my husband's like, he's going to be fine. He's going to be fine. So when my child was eight weeks old, he finally had a doctor's appointment with an audiologist. They did the same kind of test, but this time they put um, electrodes out all over his head to measure to see if his brain wave activities could register by hearing these sounds and he could hear certain sounds he couldn't hear other sounds so the doctor that day when he didn't pass his test said to us in this exact tone exact words to me and my husband so he didn't pass his test he's gonna have to wear hearing aids for the rest of his life go ahead and call this number pamphlet and they'll they'll go ahead and help you out and they'll be able to um to direct you on what you're supposed to do have a good day. That is exactly how we found out that our son was hard of hearing. So as you can imagine, um, we weren't new parents, but this is still our baby. You know, this is our second child, our first son. Um, so as you can imagine, my husband took it rather, um, my husband took it really hard because this was our first son, his, his boy, you know? Um, the first thing you start to feel is guilt. Guilt. What did I do wrong? Did I not eat the right things? Did I have things that I wasn't supposed to have? Did I not take my prenatals the way I was supposed to? You know, as one of our families predispositioned to this uh, diagnosis, you start to feel guilt. Like I did something wrong. I did something wrong. I did something wrong. And then you start to feel guilt. Like what did I do in my life that this is how I'm being repaid? You didn't do anything. You did not do anything. If your child has been diagnosed with a hard of hearing diagnosis, you did nothing wrong. This is how the baby was supposed to be. And for a long time, I never claimed it. I said, you know what? I'm not claiming this. My son is going to be all right. And guess what? He is okay. You can definitely raise a successful, intelligent, um, fun, loving, um, full blown on boy with the diagnosis of hard of hearing. I think my husband, it took him a little longer. It took him about a year to finally, um, be okay. Not okay. It took him, it took him closer to a year to be able to attend the classes and listen to the conferences and do all of that because it was much more emotional for him. I feel like as mommy, I didn't allow myself the time or the energy to be sad about it i went full blown into mommy mode and i said okay we got this diagnosis what do i do how can i how can how am i going to help my son how am i going to make uh, how am i going to ensure that he's going to be just like any other kid on that playground that he's going to be in mainstream schooling that he, i don't want my kids to take you know different classes special ed classes or or not have the experience that other children are going to have because that's the first thing that goes in your mind you start to worry is he going to get teased is he going to get bullied you know is his sibling gonna treat him differently or are you gonna treat both of the kids differently how is my family gonna take this 
because now you have to explain it to family take one step at a time you're gonna dibble and dabble in the guilt a little bit here and there but don't allow yourself to fall into this big deep depression over this diagnosis because i am here to tell you that your child can definitely be that happy rambunctious annoying getting into everything climbing throwing sport playing laugh loud active little baby it, it can definitely happen but it's gonna take you the mom and the dad to be the first teacher and to ensure that this happens so number one was you're gonna feel guilty what did you do wrong and I'm here to tell you you did nothing wrong so what do you do after that communication with your spouse whether it's your husband your boyfriend your the father of your child whether it's your wife your girlfriend or the mother of your child you have got to communicate and what I mean is don't let one parent do more than the other because that's when resentment builds up um, my husband and I for the first nine months or so I was the one going to all the class he went to the initial ones I was going to all the classes I was taking him here I was taking him there and he was working 14 hour days so that I could stay home so that I can figure out what am I going to do with this little baby because Leilani she doesn't have anything I don't, I don't know how to do any of this so he we decided that I was gonna stay home and I was going to focus all of my energy into helping this little baby be normal or what we what we all consider normal right so I was going to all the appointments I was taking Leilani with me I was tired and one of the myths of, that people believe when you're a stay-at-home mom is that you don't do anything all day I'm here to tell you we do more we do more we do more because so much more is expected of us as stay-at-home moms so finally one day I told him you know I am NOT a single mother why am I doing everything why aren't you doing why aren't you doing more why aren't you helping why aren't you taking a day off here and there so that you can help me go to these classes it's emotional for me and blah 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 I don't know what he said to me I still wake up every single morning praying that this goes away so then I felt selfish for pushing him and pushing him to help me more when emotionally he wasn't capable of doing that. And you know, as men, they have to put this big facade and this big wall up like nothing bothers them, like they're not emotional, but they are. These are their children. And I found to believe that if a man's heart cannot tenderize because of their children, there's something really wrong with that man. And my husband was just being a dad, an amazing dad, you know? still being very emotionally involved with this diagnosis so i realized we're not communicating the way that we should you know he's never told me that he's still very emotional about this and i never told him the resentment that i was building because i was doing everything and we finally had a conversation we communicated he offered to help more i shared more and i promise you that made a whole lot of difference when it came to our relationship and when it came to being able to help our child um, so that's number two communicating with your spouse or whoever it is you have a baby with and making sure that you guys understand each other N not one person isn't right and the other person is wrong no you're both right because you're both entitled to feel the way that you feel about a diagnosis when it involves your child so please remember that um, that you both have equal parts in the emotions that you feel about this diagnosis because you're the mom and you're the dad you both love this kid equally so communicate with your spouse. The next thing that I did after that was you have to communicate with family. This can be tricky because you're trying to be calm, you're trying to be understanding, you're trying to not stress yourself out about this diagnosis and the minute you tell your family, because your family loves you so much, they, still, they take it to 100. Well, what? So, okay, so then so what does that mean? He can't hear? So what are you supposed to do? And and if you have a parent like my dad, where he completely refused to believe that this was true, he just kept saying, he's too little, the doctors, there's no way for the doctors to know, he's too little, This, you know, he's, he's going to grow up and he's going to be able to go back and tell the doctors that they were wrong, that wasn't helpful to me. And he felt that if he accepted the diagnosis, that he was being a bad father to me. 
that he wasn't being strong enough for me, that he wasn't showing me support by accepting the diagnosis, but it was the complete opposite. And I remember my mom, when I told her, I told her one day and then the following day I, I spoke to her and she told me, you know, I think I'm hurting more than you. And I said, how? That's my baby. And she said, no, because I'm hurting for my grandson and I'm hurting for my daughter. So I'm hurting more than you with this diagnosis because I want to be able to help you. And I, you know, I don't, I know how you are, you're very emotional and I don't know how to help you. I don't know how to verbally encourage you. I don't know what to say to you because this is your child and I'm a mom and I don't know what to say to you. And so I remember my mother-in-law said the same thing to my husband, like, you know, this is hard for all of us. I'm here, whatever it is you need, let me know. But I knew that my mother-in-law as well was hurting for, was hurting more than we were because she was hurting for her son and she's hurting for her grandchild. So I think when you communicate with family, you should be very open and honest about what the diagnosis is. If you don't really know much about the diagnosis yet, tell them that. I don't really know what this is yet. I'm still learning. All I'm asking is that you guys are supportive and happy and don't treat my son any differently. Don't treat my child any differently because there's nothing wrong with him. You know, there's, there's nothing wrong with him. So communicating with family. I remember my niece, Bailey. She, the first time I brought um, the baby over after he got his hearing aids, I brought him over to my sister's house and she looked and was like, Thea, what is that? And I said, oh, he just needs a little help hearing sometimes. She goes, oh, he can't hear? I said, yes, he can hear you. But sometimes he can't hear the f, the s, the h, the sh. And she's like, oh, okay. End of discussion. Be honest with your family. Whether they're little, whether they're older. Be honest with your family because if you don't make it, like it's such a big bad deal, they're not either. They're not either. They're going to take their cue from you. So communicate with your family. Now, where do you go from here? Where do we go from here? Um, we, had, we found it very hard to get reliable, honest help. If it wasn't for John Tracy, and they are not paying me to make this video, if it wasn't for John Tracy, I don't know where we would be today with our child. Um, when we arrived at John Tracy for a second opinion, um, she saw that we were devastated. She saw that we were sad, our eyes were swollen, because I, I did the second opinion for the very next day. So she did the test and it came out the same. And she said, can I help you guys? Like, um, cause I see you guys, I can see it all over your face. Like, are you guys okay? Like, how can I help you? And so my husband with a knot in his throat asked her, is he going to be normal? Is he going to be having a normal life? And she looked at us and she smiled and she was like, oh, you guys are so cute. She said, he's going to be fine. He's going to play game, play football. He's going to have a girlfriend. He's going to have a lot of best friends. He's going to be able to talk. He's going to um, grow up just the exact same way his sibling and his cousins are growing up. He's going to be fine. But there's going to be a lot of work that needs to be done. And when she told us that, I could feel the bag of bricks lifted off my back. I could see the relief on my husband's face. And so where do you go from there? you find yourself reliable help and I'm gonna tell you this nobody out there is gonna hold your hand to learn these steps I had to learn everything by myself I took online parent advocacy classes so that I could learn what the law says about the rights that my child has whether it be to purchase the hearing aids whether it be for insurance purposes of what they cover um, for children who are born with severe to to profound hard of hearing which before used to be called deaf um, now it's called hard of hearing and they just give you the module so for example my son is mild to moderate hard of hearing um, then there's moderate there's mild mild to moderate 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 to severe severe and then severe to profound and so it just goes in stages um, there are a lot of insurance companies who will try to play you and say oh we don't cover that we don't cover that if you prepare yourself and learn the law and know what things your child is entitled to by law, it doesn't matter how they, what they want to cover, it doesn't matter what they think, they're going to have to help you. School districts, your child is going to have to go through what is called an IFSP, so it's an Individual Family Service Plan. And I'll make more videos going more into depth about these things because 
you know, I found a passion to help parents that have children with special needs. I don't personally feel like my child has special needs because my child, you would never know he has hearing aids. Um, but there are other children who have special needs that are more severe than the one my child has. And nobody helps you. There's a lot of people that the less you know, the better for them because it makes their job easier. The more you know and the more you put these people to work, the, 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 the less they want to help you. But they know that you're prepared and they can't shy away from you. School districts. If you don't know what the what the plan is supposed to look like, what rights your child has under the law, with specific specifically for for school districts, they're gonna walk all over you. Um, audiologists, you have to find yourself a doctor that you trust, that they they know. If I send you five emails in one day, please trust and believe that I'm a paranoid mother and I need and I need answers. You find yourself a doctor that you're comfortable with, that doesn't judge you for your crazy, that knows that you're gonna be on top on top of everything that has to do with your child and moving forward with that diagnosis. Um, for myself, I because I was a stay-at-home mom, now mind you, I don't want to make it seem like I didn't have anything going on. No. I had a toddler, a newborn. I was a stay-at-home mom. I was in school for trying to get my degree. And I was still running a household. You still have to cook, clean, wash. My husband's working 14 hours a day making sure that we, have, we can make ends meet because I'm at home with, with our children. And you have to divide the work. And his work was outside of the home. My work was completely inside of the home with the children. Um, so prepare yourself in the sense that you know what you're talking about and you know the things that protect you as a family when it comes to helping your child with this diagnosis. You are your child's first teacher. If you're okay, your child's gonna be okay. If you're prepared, your child's gonna be prepared. If you're learning, your child is learning. So. Prepare yourself by finding yourself a team. And you create this team on your own. Don't allow them to just give you a team. Um, when I, and when I mean by they, I mean by the doctors. I mean by his teachers. I mean by the school districts. Don't allow people to just tell you, oh, these are the people you're going to get. No. Get, get a notepad. Get some pens. I always kept a black and red pen because I wrote my questions down in black and I wrote the answers down in red. And if I didn't understand something, then I brought a different color out because I was going to ask the question again I would send emails out and print them out keep your paper trail I mean there's so many things and like I said I'm gonna make another video where I'm gonna go into in, into deep information as far as the IFSP which is an individualized family service plan when it goes into the IEP um, all of these things that, that I had to learn on my own I'm gonna continue to make videos because I want to help parents as much as I can to give them the tools that nobody gave me it's hard there's days where I cried. There's days where I would lock myself in the room when my husband was off and, and the, so that I could go on the computer and read for hours about the laws that protected my child the day before the IEFSP um, was to be conducted. I mean, I went through a lot and I know that other parents out there are going through a lot and I feel like it's really hard and you have to do all the learning on your own. And so this is why I'm sharing my story with everyone because I want people to know that there are people out there that will help you. It's just a very few. So that's why I'm making these videos. And I'm going to continue to make more videos to share other parts of the process more in depth. The last thing I want you guys to know is that success is possible. I look at my child now. He's three and a half. He's in mainstream preschool. And if you didn't see his hearing aids, you would never know that he wears them. He has full-blown conversations. He sings, he dances, he plays. He gets on my nerves, <laughs> he fights. He, he does everything that a regular three-year-old will do. So I want to throw it out there. I want to, I, I want to get through to parents who might feel like right now their child was diagnosed and they, they see no light at the end of the tunnel. There is definitely a light so bright at the end of that tunnel you just have to put in the work you have to educate yourself as far as your child's diagnosis goes and push forward push forward push forward so i hope that this video wasn't too long um i hope that you guys enjoyed this information if you're a parent with a child with special needs please um leave a comment below i have a question and if i don't know it i'm gonna be honest with you i don't know everything but i know that i was able to help my child 
um, I have a wonderful um, team in my corner. You know, I have um, one of my cousins. She is a special needs high school teacher, and I, you know, would bug her all the time and ask her questions. And um, she's on the other end of the spectrum. She works for the school district. She conducts the IEPs, and so. I found it very knowledgeable to be able to contact her because she was raw and honest with me. So I love you, Brittany. Thank you so much. Um, I love the team that I had. You know, my mom, my mother-in-law, my 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 friends. I mean, my husband. You know, as long as you have a positive team with you, you're you will definitely achieve success with your child. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, please like, share. Uh, push the bell to get an alert when I post another video and I appreciate everyone who watched this video. Thanks. Bye